Hello, everyone. Do you hear me well? Yes. Very good. My name is Maxim, and today we'll have a look at the efforts of Angular team regarding progressive web apps. This is the title of uh, the session, how it was when I submitted it to JS Heroes conference some time ago. But the time is running, and uh, everything is changing really, really fast in this area, in PWA, in Angular, you know it. And today, actually, we'll speak more about Angular Service Worker. What happened with Mobile Toolkit? You will know it on the last slide. Um, OK, so first I want to ask you, who are Angular developers? Nice, at least one third. Uh, who has some experience with Angular 2, 4, all that stuff? New? Amazing. I think uh, more hands than when I asked about Angular. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this, is, uh, this will be super interesting for you. Just imagine, with one simple command in your terminal window, you convert your Angular application to progressive Angular application. Sounds exciting, right? Let's go and check what this uh, magic command. About me, uh, I work for a company called ForgeRock, and um, I develop applications for the future, from the future. This is why I enjoy to use all the latest technologies, frameworks, and PWA works fine for me. I'm Google Developer Expert in Angular, and I run uh, local meetups in Oslo, where I live, uh, about Angular, PWA, a couple of others, and I run a couple of conferences. Today I want to focus on mobile era. If someone heard about mobile era, we'll fix this. <laughs> it's super easy to remember um, the host name, the domain, mobileera.rocks, and it will rock for the second time this year in October in Oslo. So you are very, very welcome to join this event as attendee. So we'll cover all kinds of uh, mobile development, starting from native, but we are JavaScript guys. Um, Progressive web apps will work for us perfectly, and all the kinds of mobile web. So mobile web is first class citizen on this conference. Um, we'll post uh, the agenda uh, next week, and uh, I promise this will be something unbelievable. I'm double happy to give a special discount for all the heroes. Um, just use this code, and uh, this will be on the slides. I will post later on my Twitter. This is why it could be uh, useful for you to follow me, WebMaxRU. I post mostly about uh, web, PWA, JavaScript, Angular. OK, uh, enough with uh, this shameless promotion. Let's go back to our main topic which is uh, progressive web apps. And uh, this is not uh, one more getting started with PWA session. We'll go further. Uh, we'll have a look at Angular. But I still wish to give you some context on uh, what PWA is um, from my point. Uh, we have some uh, milestones on the web on its development. <sighs> Early 90s, we create uh, static web pages. Then uh, we were happy to use JavaScript for some uh, fancy stuff, like something is catching your, your cursor. Not so useful, but funny. Uh, useful things came with Ajax. And um, this was the time point when we started to send the request to our backend straight from our application without need to reload the page. It was something crazy. And it was the time point when single page applications uh, appeared very massive. Responsive web design. Thanks to media queries, we now can create uh, our apps for any device, any platform, any screen size, for everything. And PWA. I think uh, by the impact to the web, it's one of these milestones, not less, maybe, maybe even larger. What is it? Uh, Wikipedia says this is a methodology, not a framework, not a tool. And uh, this is hybrid of uh, best parts from uh, native mobile development and best parts from the web. 
And by the way, this is uh, already outdated slide. I checked recently, and this is not uh, a methodology anymore. This is just a modern way we create uh, native, not, not, not native, but um, native-like web application. So this will be something super common for us in next, I don't know, years, months, days, weeks, who knows. Uh, on the same page, 10 characteristics. I will not focus on uh, each one, of course, because uh, I bet that you, uh, your applications uh, comply with uh, some of them right now, today, and we'll focus on um, some of them. Service Worker API, it makes us possible to create offline applications plus optimize networking. And thanks to this API, we can create application shell. So wh what is it? This is just basically a set of uh, the files needed to run our application. What we do, we just take these files, put it into a special cache um, using cache API, and that's it. We can start the app even in offline mode or optimize network experience uh, quite uh, seriously. Last but not least, we want to engage our users. We want to remind uh, users uh, about our app, about something new happened with our product, our service. And uh, these two guys are here to help us push and notifications. These are two separate APIs, but they often work all together. Um, you can go and um, code your service worker manually. Absolutely no problem. Um, there are all the APIs are for you. and. Uh, not all of them are bound specifically to PWA. These are just modern web APIs. But instead of going to create our service worker manually, let's just uh, try to have some tooling to help us. And yeah, forgot to mention that's uh, as truly a synchronous concept. Uh, everything in PWA is based on promises. All these APIs are only Asynchronous. So this puts some limitations, but we are totally fine with this modern way we build our apps. Yes, so let's go back to Angular, finally. Uh, if you go to NPM and to uh, Angular alias, you will find two packages there. First one is service worker. Probably yesterday it was uh, bumped to beta 15, just to update uh, core Angular versions, nothing serious with this update, and App Shell. Uh, and by App Shell, uh, Angular team means server-side rendered one. And um, so this is not regular App Shell. This is a cool App Shell, advanced App Shell, super, super App Shell. Anyway, this one is hopelessly outdated, and uh, I believe uh, it will be removed. In favor of new version, we use um, Angular Universal to server-side render our templates, uh, our applications, and we'll uh, dedicate a slide a bit later to this. So let's focus on the first one, service worker. Let's go explore it. In our case, this will be not regular service worker, but Angular service worker from the title of our session, or in short, this is called NGSW. Good. If we go to explore this package, there will be four main parts. First, um, bundle. It's the service worker itself. This is something we plug into our application. So this is just uh, some set of uh, JavaScript files, like regular one, minimized one. OK, we just copy it to our folder, uh, to our uh, output folder. We register it, and we are go. Next, build set of plugins for uh, build systems. Now these are Gulp and Webpack to automate the steps we just mentioned before, like copying, like registering, and a couple more interesting things. Next, Companion, just tiny Angular module plus Angular class to help us to communicate, to organize communication between Angular service worker and our app. We'll see why it could be really useful. And last but not least, source code of Angular service worker itself. It will help us to build a custom version of Angular service worker. Why do we need this? To extend the functionality. Um, 
service worker, an Angular service worker is intended to be um, to, to play main role in uh, PWA uh, part of our application. So it can't work as um, say one more service worker or imported service worker. No, it's here to be the main one. This is why if we wish to extend the functionality, we have to update it. Okay, um, I mentioned one magic command, right, that converts our application to PWA. Let's go for it. First, we go to install this package, nothing um, super special, and this is the command we have to run in our terminal to get all this magic. ng set service worker equals true. What it does, it just set the corresponding field in um, JSON file, which is setting file for Angular CLI, Angular command line interface. Okay, we run this command, we have the settings. What next? Let's go to build our application. And it's important to make, to perform a production build, dash dash prod. Service worker makes sense and works only in this mode. Well, done. Let's Check what changed. Um, first, in our index.html, we got one more import of uh, one more script, plus three more files in dist folder, or the folder you specified as output of um, Angular CLI work. First one is uh, just tiny script that we import in index.html. This is just a basic registration of service worker itself of Angular service worker, the one we copy from build. Second is service worker itself, the, 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 the one copied from, from bundles part, and some manifest. Um, okay, these three files, and what's next? Next, uh, we serve the application using any static web server, or we deploy it somewhere and run it in browser. We see our super application. And now we can uh, go offline, for example, using Chrome DevTools or DevTools from your favorite browser. And the magic will happen. Your application will work uh, like, like you connected to the internet. So what we have? We have application shell up and running, powered by Angular Service Worker. Let's go into details how that happened. Uh, let's have a look at this manifest file generated for us by Angular command line interface. What we see there, basically, these are files of our Angular application. Um, just list of files we have in this folder, plus their hashes. Obviously, these are cache busters. Um, so once um, we uh, build a new file, new version of the file, the hash will be new and probably Angular Service Worker will do some magic under the hood to update the application for our user. Good. So, uh, ngsw manifest JSON, which is generated by Angular CLI, is nothing but settings file for Angular Service Worker. It's important. Uh, please do not be confused by the name of this file, the manifest, because uh, if you try to do something with PWAs, you know that there is another manifest file, which is a manifest file for application itself, not for service worker, and this is a part of uh, PWA standard, a PWA specification. This is different. This is a manifest for Angular service worker. It could cause to confusion sometimes, so do not mess up these two ones. Okay, what we have now, if we go offline, we will have um, our application up and running thanks to the plugin of Angular Service Worker called Static Content Caching. Yeah, uh, important to mention that uh, Angular Service Worker built using uh, plugins architecture, and for each piece of functionality, it has its own plugin. And if we wish to extend this functionality, we just write our own plugin and build Service Worker ourselves. So we have static content caching plugin that does this uh, caching of static resources for us, which is basically app shell, application shell. Very good. Next, um, what if we wish to serve our app shell not just for uh, 
root for slash index HTML, but for each root of our app. Uh, say using uh, Angular router, we can uh, generate set of routes, and this is how regular application works. If you go and type uh, slash news slash something, you will see our old good friend offline Dino, unfortunately. Why? Because uh, Angular Service Worker is quite demanding on what to serve. So uh, he, it, it cached slash index HTML and it will serve only, only this one. It uh, knows nothing about all other routes. How to redirect everything to index HTML and let Angular does the job on uh, routing? Using next plugin called route redirection. What we do? We uh, specify index, where to redirect, and what to redirect. Basically, we have to list all the routes of our application here. For now, we have to do it manually, uh, but more tight integration of Angular Service Worker and uh, Angular CLI is on its way. So this set of routes will be generated automatically as well. OK, uh, you can ask me. So we have uh, one NGSW manifest auto-generated, right? And we can extend by more settings, uh, by, by specifying the settings in uh, another NGSW manifest. And obviously, if we go to edit the one auto-generated, all our changes, uh, our additions will be wiped on the next build. How to combine these two? There is a special mechanism for doing this. You just uh, have your own NGSW manifest file uh, in the root folder of the Angular application, and during the build, Angular CLI will just take our own part of NGSW manifest and will mix it up with auto-generated one. So super simple and elegant. Well, um, sometimes our application could contain not just the files from uh, distributive folder, uh, but some external ones, even for AppShell, even for this first uh, startup. The best example here is uh, web fonts, for example, or any web icons based on uh, web fonts, uh, whatever, any third party resources. It's uh, another discussion, is, is this uh, best practice or not, but I can say this is quite often. Uh, how to cache all these files in addition to the ones generated by Angular CLI? Right, using third plugin called external content caching. What we do, we specify the list of URLs Angular Service Worker will take on uh, first run and put into this cache in addition to the files generated by CLI. As a result, We'll, we could have uh, some nice icons uh, got from a uh, third-party um, website for our application shell, and uh, this is how our, our app could look in offline mode. For example, we could have some kind of spinner or some message, like, uh, unfortunately, we are offline. Um, we can't do anything except showing you some parts of UI, which is also uh, much better than, than just, just showing offline Dino here. Good. Now we have application shell fully up and running, the nice one. What about the ca caching uh, of resources we receive from the network, from our API or external APIs, whatever? during um, runtime. We definitely don't know the list of these resources because who knows where user will go and which API endpoints uh, they, will, they will trigger. Um, there is plugin number four called dynamic content. Uh, it's a bit more complex in terms of settings. Uh, why? Uh, because it's super, super flexible. And uh, why do we need this flexibility? Because runtime caching is much more tricky than a uh, static one. Why? Because for different URLs, we could specify totally different caching strategies. And uh, it's implemented exactly this way. We specify group of uh, URLs, of resources, and specify 
which strategy we go for this group. As an example, uh, probably for something like API slash breaking news, we have to go for freshness strategy, which means that we have to go to ping uh, our API each time we need to get this resource because uh, probably um, it, it's fine to have something cached, but uh, each time we trigger this uh, endpoint, we wish to, to get the freshest information. Okay, good, one example. Second one, uh, for end endpoints like uh, API slash uh, new slash archive slash um, 1980s, probably we can be a bit more conservative, and if there is something already cached, we can go and check if, if it's there, we can serve it, no problem. And if it's not cached, of course, we'll go to network and get it from there. Good, uh, so how we set this um, settings? First, we, for each group, we specify the URLs, and it's quite flexible. We can um, have it by prefix, we can uh, have it by uh, exact match, or we can have it even by regexp. And we specify the strategy. The first uh, optimize for, this is main switch. Do we go for freshness or performance? And then we can tune this up very, very uh, scrupulous way with um, simple, single tiny uh, setting, if, if we need it, including, you know, the last one, cache invalidation strategy, which is maybe not so often used, but still we have this possibility. Awesome. Now we can, uh, oh, sorry, uh, have uh, dynamic content uh, loaded. Uh, if if uh, after first run we got these resources, we, will, we can show this to the user when uh, they offline. Then when network is not available or some bad connection, no problem. Important point here is to follow some best practices. And uh, if we go to serve some um, data from cache, it's really a good idea to show somehow uh, message or by, by design somehow that um, we are sorry, this is the data not from one second ago request, but for example from this morning, which works fine, uh, but user has to have knowledge about this. Okay, we just discovered all this set of plugins. Before we go further, I wish to introduce you a bit different way of building this uh, NGSW manifest. If you have seen the session by um, Alex Ricabo from this Google I.O., probably you remember Angular PWA tools, and you, ha you can have these questions in your heads. So, Maxim, why, why you, you haven't mentioned this? This is here. Uh, basically, this is different way to do the same. Uh, where, when it can be useful, for example, when Angular CLI is not available for some reasons. For example, um, we started the project a uh, long time ago um, without CLI, or we ejected CLI, and um, yeah, di different use cases. So how does PWA tools work, and what will happen with, uh, um, say, competition between Angular CLI and PWA tools? Let's have a look. First, this is super fresh. This is something super, super fresh. Uh, I bet uh, no single article of documentation about this, and it's not even about uh, under Angular alias in uh, NPM. This is just a private repo there. So you go to install these tools, and what you have next? Two comments. NGUSW manifest, where you basically specify um, output. Uh, it takes your application and generate the same manifest for you. Um, and so, so it will list all the static resources we have, um, these files with their hashes, and it goes a step further than current state of Angular CLI integration. And if you specify the module, which is kind of input for uh, NGSW, uh, for SW manifest command, it will generate 
the routes for us. Uh, it will take uh, the routes from uh, router settings, and uh, so all the manual work I mentioned we have to perform in case of Angular CLI, it will be um, done automatically for us. By the way, NGU, why not NG? Why there is U? Any ideas? Universal, universal. yes, right. Um, uh, it's not so obvious where is universal here because this is you know, basically just a work with um, files, some uh, analysis. But if we go for next command, which is called ngu app shell, it's obviously uh, no chance to server side render application without using universal, which is part of uh, Angular core now, which is called uh, platform server and which is uh, under super active development at the moment. But um, as an experiment, you can go and try to run this ngu app shell command, specify some um, input parameters, like, uh, for example, we can specify different module that we want to show during application load when it's uh, in offline mode, and you will get not just app shell, but uh, as I mentioned, cool app shell or say exciting app shell, amazing, amazing app shell, super performant app shell, which is server side rendered, uh, which is just static HTML with uh, inline style, so all uh, optimized to save single millisecond of uh, browser performance. So even if we, you know, even if we have a JavaScript uh, file, this JavaScript bundle. Offline, we still have to wait some time when it will be parsed by browser um, and uh, w when the application itself will be scaffolded. It's totally different in this case. It's just static HTML, and before uh, actual application will be loaded, we, s we already can have something really, really meaningful for uh, our users. Okay, we'll return to Angular PWA tools a bit later on our last slide. Now we go to continue um, exploring Angular Service Worker. You remember I mentioned tiny module and class called companion. How do we use it? In, um, in Angular way, I can say. In um, app module, we just uh, import module, nothing uh, specific. In our component file, probably uh, we wish to uh, get this class, and uh, in constructor we wish to inject it using again Angular way. Dependency, this is how dependency injection works. What useful could we do with uh, this class under our fingers? Really interesting stuff. For example, we can implement a very gentle application update flow. You remember that. Uh, Angular Service Worker um, keeps track on uh, hashes of the statically cached files, and sooner or later we have to inform user about uh, the newer version is here. And um, to be gentle, probably it's not a good idea to go and refresh uh, application without any notice. So what can we do? We can listen for updates. Uh, of Angular Service Worker. What, what is SW here is uh, the one, I'm sorry, yeah, from the, this slide, this is just basically the, the name of token we inject in constructor. So just for short, uh, I called it SW. And we can listen updates and subscribe to these updates. And there are two status of, uh, of this uh, state, pending or activation. So if something is pending, that it means that we have newer version of application ready to be served for the user. So uh, again, following the best practices, and probably you've seen it on some websites, like small toast or dialogue uh, pops up with uh, notice that a newer version of application is available. Do you wish to refresh the page? If you click yes, we got there, and the type will be activation. Here we can just reload the page. This is just one of example of what uh, useful could be companion library for. Yes, this is what I just discussed. Push notifications. Uh, the, the last plugin we'll uh, explore 
today. And push is really interesting process. It is, it's a multi-step process, both in terms of subscription to push notifications and in terms of um, showing them. So welcome to the crash course push notifications in one minute. We start from our application. We, uh, after user clicked on uh, some subscribe to push or uh, triggered some switch like subscribed, it, it, it's important to do it explicitly. This is best practice. We go to special call special method and go to this method calls uh, push service, which is bound to each different browser. For uh, Chrome, obviously, this is. Uh, Firebase cloud messaging for Firefox. This is messaging service from uh, Mozilla and so on. So we trigger this push service. From it, we receive so-called subscription object, which we pass to our backend. And uh, we keep track of active subscriptions uh, nowhere but at the backend. So these are at least three parties should be involved in, in the process. Our front-end app, uh, push service or messaging service in, in, in different uh, documents, and backend. Yes, we subscribe. Next, let's uh, send a notification. Again, everything starts from our backend. It, we, when, uh, we decide it's time to say, say to user that new message uh, came to their inbox. OK, good. Backend triggers the same push service. Push service sends the push event to Angular service worker, and bam, service worker pops up the message. This is one way of uh, handling notifications. Um, and green boxes, they show where Angular service worker involved. Obviously, we call method of Angular service worker via companion to register for it. And of course, it's Angular service worker who listens for these push events from the backend. Why do we listen push events not uh, in our app, but in service worker? Because it's impo important to receive these push notifications even when the tab with our application is closed. So this is the power of service worker. It's always kind of online. It always listens for some events, even when uh, our application is totally, totally not there. OK, uh, here we, how we set this up. Basically, this is just one liner in uh, NGSW manifest. Push is uh, plugin number five, probably, for today. Just one setting, and we are go. Obviously, uh, this is um, to say uh, to Angular Service Worker to listen to the events. And to subscribe, we go to our old good friend, Companion, and um, using the absolutely the same mechanism, inject it in constructor, and just uh, using special method of it called register for push, we pass server key. Um, where we get this key, you can ask can catch me later. As I told, push is really, really interesting topic. It deserves a separate session. OK. Um, I mentioned that uh, we can handle this push events from our backend, from push service, differently. For example, the most obvious way, and you've seen this many times, it's like uh, dialogue pops up, some, some bubble, and with uh, the content of a notification. This is uh, method number one, but probably if you're on the application page, if you have this uh, application tab uh, before your eyes, maybe no reason to bother you with this uh, quite annoying dialogues. So we can uh, just subscribe for uh, these events, push events in straight in our app using our service worker companion again, and uh, we are free to implement any kind of logic here. For example, we can. Uh, update number of uh, unread messages on the badge uh, over, um, say, messages icon. Um, you, you, you know how it looks. It's a quite a common UI interface uh, element. Good. No, now, we have um, full application. It's uh, offline capable. It has uh, networking seriously optimized by caching resources. Uh, plus, it can entertain users uh, with some uh, um, annoying push messages. Really cool. 
Um, next, um, I mentioned that at some point, uh, after our application will grow, we will need to add more functionality. For example, to add some custom handlers uh, for push notifications. So what will happen when a user click this button or will close this or implement background sync? The service worker API is really extensive one, and there are many, many, many uh, pieces of functionality not yet covered fully by Angular service worker. What we do in this way? We go to source, and uh, source for this Angular service worker looks like this. We import plugins and scaffold. So what do we do? We generate our own plugin, my custom plugin, and uh, we list it in the plugins property, bam. We build this custom service worker. We plug in it uh, instead of the one uh, from bundles, and we are go. We are having our own custom version of Angular service worker. So let's uh, sum up. We have uh, automatic PWA uh, with just specifying some uh, settings in uh, manifest file, in the, this settings file for um, Angular service worker, and with instantiating this uh, using simple terminal command, we got a really interesting application up and running totally automatically without single line of code. Okay, there are, there are a couple of lines to register service worker. Uh, but the rest is just via configuration. Now, uh, this is really, really fresh. Uh, it's under active development, and the Angular team uh, puts a lot of efforts into this direction. What will happen next? This is not official roadmap. This is uh, what, what I know I um, want to share with you. First, quite soon, we will not need to install this uh, Angular slash service worker package because this will be a part of Angular core. Next, um, Motite integration is on its way. Uh, the, the first use case, I think, will be this uh, generation of routes even in Angular CLI mode. Simpler flow to have server-side rendered version of our application shell. This amazing Angular PWA tools will be a part of uh, Angular CLI service worker build process. So probably they will stay as separate ones, but uh, they will be included in the, into the flow, introducing all this uh, missing at the moment functionality. By this, we will make uh, progressive web applications are kind of default ones for all our Angular apps. And um, basically, there is no more need to such an entity like a mobile toolkit. It was um, actual some, some time ago during this experiment time, but now each application could be powered by service worker and it's not connected to mobile experience. It also optimizes uh, seriously your desktop experience. So this is why Mobile Toolkit in its current form will disappear in favor of Angular service worker and functionality around Angular service worker. And last but not least, for us, for developers, all the documentation uh, is uh, on the side, hope, hopelessly outdated, unfortunately. Um, after my session, I'll post a link to these slides, plus a link to workshop-like documentation I created for uh, my full-day Angular Service Worker workshop, and everything I mentioned today in details is there. So uh, follow my Twitter, it will be there, and basically this is the only source of documentation for this functionality at the moment. Thank you very much. <laughs> Multimask mult, right? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I believe... Um,
you can ask me questions and I'll go through these questions. Uh, yes, mm. let's let's pick uh, three questions now. Ah. And for the other you ones, time, right? yeah, with, for two more minutes we can we can do it. And for the others, you have a chance mm -hmm. to reply on the Slack channel. Yeah, yeah, I'll be around so you can catch me later. But l okay, let's take some questions that could be interesting for most of uh, audience. Uh, t -t 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 don't you think that Angular PWA is hard to set up uh, for beginners? Yes, without documentation it's sometimes hard to set up. Uh, <laughs> but uh, once uh, we'll have this, um, just single command, just some basic uh, configuration in JSON file, and we are go. Important to mention that uh, Angular Service Worker is far not the only way to generate PWA experience for your Angular app. Angular app this is just basic JavaScript application, and you, you are free to choose any um, existing PWA library. So uh, I encourage you to use Workbox, for example, which was introduced this Google I.O. and which is uh, logical development of a uh, very, very famous SW precache library. So li uh, Angular works fine with this option as well. Which uh, mobile UI library do you use Angular for PWA? Angular Material. I go for uh, Angular Material for all my applications, for uh, workshops. Uh, really, really nice. And it's still in beta, unfortunately, uh, but it's quite stable at the moment. Um, many, many uh, UI controls. So if you haven't uh, checked this, I strongly recommend you to use this one. And in addition, there are some nice uh, commercial UI toolkits. Uh, I will not mention their names now. You, you can catch me later. If you subscribe on multiple browsers to push, you'll get multiple. Yes, if if you subscribed for um, for the in the single app uh, in the Chrome, and you you'll open the same app in uh, Firefox, you will definitely receive uh, notifications both in Chrome from Firebase uh, Cloud Messaging and in Firefox from uh, Mozilla Messaging Service and. Furthermore, this autumn, uh, Microsoft Edge will introduce service worker push notifications app manifest, and uh, this autumn it will be fully supported. Uh, so there were three questions. Yes, I think we have to to stop here. But yeah, uh, there are, there are a lot of uh, answers that have been given back on the on the Slack channel. So mm -hmm. please be patient until they will be answered there. Last piece of information for me, uh, for, from me. Uh, just a week ago, I organized a dedicated progressive web application Slack team. It's just one uh, week old, but there are already 200 plus developers, uh, representatives from all the main browsers, from all the main uh, frameworks, from Angular, from Workbox, uh, from uh, large and small companies. You are welcome to join. If you're interested in PWA, this will be a really cool source of uh, experience, documentation, everything from you. I'll post a link on my Twitter. Awesome. Now, thank you very much. Thank you.